down payment on the American dream, solar power. Businesses shuttered, fuel efficient, put people to work, unprecedented efforts, dams, jobs lost, recovery, biofuels, unprecedented transparency, dreams put on hold, clean coal, recovery, renewable energy, three million jobs, recovery capacity to rise, bridges, homes foreclosed. What do you think a stimulus is? Is this the same? I mean, does this sort of like exist? On a timeline? I'm Wayne Conger. Um, I'm a Master's of Architecture student at Columbia University. I'm Troy Tarion. I'm also a Master of Architecture student at Columbia University. Imagine Recovery is an open design competition. It parallels the first 100 days of the Obama presidency, and it's asking a number of questions of designers and asking designers to answer a number of questions about, or to ask a number of questions about their relationship to, to policy in America. January 20th was, was Inauguration Day, so that's day one. Day 35, the competition was launched. Um, day 45 through day 55, we had the 10-day the policy forum. It's a, an online kind of continuous conversation where we, 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 we selected uh, students from, from different policy schools around the world. We took that and, and summarized it, and that became the competition brief. Um, on day 65, we, we, we offered the summary. And so basically from day 65 till day 100, designers are allowed to, to design so and then they, they submit on midnight of the 100th day is the, is the last. If it, if it is retroactive, then we do have to go into the next okay. to address. So if, if policy makers are the kind of the first to make kind of moves um, that will then kind of affect recovery, then there's, you know, we're wondering how can designers kind of be part of that conversation. And so the competition itself is is our effort to be at the beginning of the conversation. One of the documents that we were looking at in kind of late 2008 was the, uh, the Obama uh, urban policy plan. Um, and then comparing that against the, the inauguration speech where you know, all, this, you know, all the things, there were so many things in the urban policy plan that were exciting for designers. So there's this idea of like innovative infrastructure and all this kind of like spending on things that really made a space for designers to potentially have a voice. And then at the inauguration speech, there was a, a distinct kind of move back to almost like historical things. Infrastructural projects such as roads and bridges and so on. And so one of the first questions, you know, what is so, what's so new about the new New Deal? The other was sort of what does one trillion dollars look like? Um, because it's very difficult to sort of wrap your, your, your mind around and, your, and sort of your hands. And when we were initially sketching out like what our response to that would be, it was sort of like these infographics where it's like, oh, well, one trillion dollars is like this many jumbo jets, or one trillion dollars is like this many miles of road, or... Um, on the, the submission format is, is, is uh, it's very strict. There's, there's, you're allowed to uh, submit one experiential image, whatever you think that is. And that's also a reaction to sort of the stimulus bill itself, that, that the images are meant to be sort of a great interpreter between the production of policy and the consumption by the public, um, and if they're going to be that, then they have to be much more effective than the 1,500-page documents that, um, that the legislative process produces. And so the experiential image is this, is this way to kind of produce an image of a lived experience in recovery. The idea of the American dream kind of came out of this kind of ability to imagine a certain image. Is it going to be the traditional American dream from sort of like the 1950s, or is it going to be um, a projective American dream. When you see the old photographs during FDR's fireside chats and it's sort of what's in that image is sort of maybe the radio is sort of the infrastructural technique but this is sort of the image surrounding that radio is the sort of like nuclear family sort of huddled around it mm -hmm. and potentially there's sort of like a 21st century version of that. But the experiential image I think ends up being this potentially very powerful thing that allows designers to kind of as we've written elsewhere, join the ranks of, of journalists and pundits and bloggers and all these people that are acting as mediators between you know, public policy and the public. I don't think we're exclusively looking for built projects. Um, there's a lot of other ways to sort of build an infrastructure that doesn't have to be driven on, walked on, or sort of uh, physically traversed. If those shovel-ready projects are going to take 18 months, designers can potentially be involved in kind of projects that'll help to kind of perpetuate political will and public support for these things. Projects such as, you know, uh, branding the stimulus bill, or, you know, how do you kind of change the name of it such that, you know, when stimulus bill number two comes around, it doesn't sound like, oh, again? Um, but more no. like, again, this is a moment where, you know, there's this idea in the air that there's a potential for change. And I think, and designers are kind of one of the first to kind of try to capitalize on that and kind of, you know, let their kind of imaginations expand a bit. And so in another 100 days, in 10 years, in 15 years or whatever, there's kind of like this image that we've, you know, through this competition kind of produced a framework for people to kind of offer their imagination of what they thought the future was in this like very brief window of potential, you know, idea that people could actually think that there's another future possible. Yeah. You can think about design in another way. It's not just 
providing, you know, designing a new electric hybrid vehicle or a new highway for it to like operate on, but thinking about design in a different way and figuring out what are those skills that we've learned by serving the private sector that can serve the public sector in ways that you know we've never really thought before of as as kind of design. Design can actually be used to hedge against risk. And so in kind of in kind of a society that is adverse to risk, as opposed to thinking of innovation as a, as a risky venture or kind of a test of something, and then going back to kind of tried and tested models, it's actually more risky to go back to the tried and tested yeah. models because they don't really apply to the current situation. And so to re kind of think design as something that can operate in a recession, part of the imagining and the imaginary recovery is, is meant to be kind of this, this invocation that at this moment, potentially we can imagine different futures for ourselves, which also means kind of imagining different presents. This is what I'm working through because that's sort of like, that is legislative. The legislative processes, right? This is my philosophy. This then you produce an experiential image of that that's true to that. Then you kind of give an image of what bang for your buck looks like.